Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So, I watched this video, and I watched it a while ago, from Tish on Naptime Creations. And if you guys haven't watched her, check her out. She does some amazing things. Anyway, she did this coaster set with dish detergent. And I really, really think it's cool. So I decided that I wanted to try my hand at it and see how we can get along. So what I'm doing now is my plan is to do a cake stand. And the first thing that she does is she mixes up a bunch of glitters in various colors. And from what her tutorial said, I want to say it's like four ish colors, maybe five is best to work with because of the way that you have to do it. So I am just getting a bunch of chunky glitters and kind of mixing them up. Now, four of them I purchased. The other one is just one that I made up and we're going to kind of see how it goes. So I figured a pink, a white, kind of like a baby blue color, silver, and then the one that I mixed up, which is like purplish, pinkish blues, and it's really pretty. So I thought, why not? Let's try it, see what we can come up with. I don't know how it's going to work. Like I said, I've never done this before, but we're going to go on this journey together. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so right now that's all I'm doing. Now I did do a lot more than what I needed because she has a couple of different videos on it. She doesn't necessarily give the directions like completely, completely, unless I missed it somewhere. But in one of them, she did like a layer, just, she uses black. And I kind of wanted to just kind of go along those same lines because, you know, I have something I guess I can compare it against. And she backs it in one of them. Now, the other video doesn't show whether, with the coasters, whether she backs it or not, so I don't know. But I gotta leave enough room in these molds, and they're fairly shallow, to kind of put a black background on it as well and see how it happens. So I mixed up a bunch, not really knowing how much I was gonna need, and we'll just throw the rest into another mold. But I think the colors look really pretty. Now, I'm kind of not loving the silver in there, but, you know, you live, you learn, and it'll be okay. It's fine. I, I am doing the, like, lines of glitter in the same order. Now, once we do the liquid dish detergent, um, or dish soap technique, like, it's not, I don't think it's going to necessarily matter because of how it comes out. But I just kind of wanted to just not take any real chances with this one since it is the first time. And next time we'll do something a little bit different. So, yeah. We're just going to have fun with this and see what happens. Now, the one thing that I will say that I wish I did differently. Actually, two things. One, I think I should have put the background down first. And then did the glitters as opposed to the other way around. Because you want it to be solid so it's not see-through-y. And two, if I were to do it in the order that I'm doing it now again, because of the glitters and just the bubbles and stuff that they create, I had a bunch of little like tiny micro bubble holes on there that I guess the resin couldn't get up through all of that glitter. So maybe spraying it with alcohol first before pouring it down would eliminate that. That or, like I said, doing it backwards, doing the backing first and then putting the glitters on. All right, so we did the glitters. Now it's time for the background. And I'm just mixing up some of my HTV Ront Black Pigment Paste in here. And we're going to go with that. So there was a lot of, a lot of lessons learned in the process of doing this. The first one being that resin is shiny, as we all know, unless it's in a matte mold, which these are not. And I picked this black pigment paste, which, you know, it's still gonna be shiny. Now, where 
I should have done differently is when I did this spray paint, I have a black chalkboard paint that I used and I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if I, if it makes that much of a difference. I mean, like when you look at it after this part, like after you do the spray painting part, before you top coat it, it's like ugly. Because you've got the shine and you want that shine to come through. Like the shine of the glitter is like one of the whole points. And you want the contrast in there of the, you know, the solid paint that you have and, and just in the colors alone. Like you want that to just all the, the, the colors of the glitter to pop through. And just looking at the matte paint up against it, it just kind of like bleh. Now granted, you're going to top coat it. So, I mean, it makes a difference. It makes it shiny, but I don't know. I just think for my own peace of mind next time, I would probably just use a glossy, normal black spray paint as opposed to chalkboard paint. But it's what I had, so it's what I used. So, you know, it, it is what it is. It, like I said, it's a learning process. This project did not come out perfectly by any means. There is a lot that I have learned and I will do differently next time. And there will most definitely will be a next time for this because I really, really love just the aesthetic that it gives. Yeah, so uh, all I did now is I'm just putting my black over, hitting it with the heat gun real quick, spreading it out to the sides, kind of going along those edges, and then we're just going to let this cure up and see what we get. Okay, so disclaimer time. Um, This video, you're, you're going to have to use your imagination just a little bit, but I know you guys, you know, you're all crafters or you know somebody who's a crafter or you know whatever the case may be and you have an imagination so we're gonna put it to use in this video because yeah there's some things but we'll get into that in a little while so now she used black and in hers I didn't notice like a difference in the color of the glitters. I don't know if she put any kind of pigmentation in with them at all. That may not be a horrible, horrible idea. Maybe. I I, I don't know. And I also, just on a side note, I, I would love to try this with like micas. I think with a mica powder, it could be really pretty too. But anyway, back to my spiel. It drastically changed the colors of my glitters which I mean I guess I should know that it would happen but when she picked the colors that she picked on the ones that she did it didn't seem like it happened to her so I don't know if I did something wrong or what happened I I, I don't know I don't know all I know is it changed the color of my glitters and I wasn't necessarily super thrilled about it because, you know, I, I picked the colors for a reason. Now, the color that the blue turns is kind of pretty. It's like it becomes like this really pretty tealish color. But the rest of them, they just kind of aren't as bright and vivid as they should have been. And the white, I just, it, I lost it completely pretty much. Which is what I'm saying. Like this video, it's... Kind of to show you a technique, but also show you me not mastering it. See how the colors turn? Like, uh, look at how pretty they are in the little thing that I had used just to kind of throw the rest of the glitters in. And then look at how the colors changed. So maybe it would be better to not do black on the background. Okay, so right now, I apologize for all the movement. I couldn't get my tripod and, um, yeah, I was trying to hold the camera and do this all at the same time. So basically what you do is you set your pieces down, you whip the soap over top of them in random designs or whatever, and then immediately hit it with your spray paint all along the edges and on the top. And you want to do it quick because you don't want to give that dish detergent time to move around and blob up and all of those things and then 
after you're covered in spray paint, you let it set for about 30 seconds, she says, and then you splash a bunch of water on it. So I've got a two quart pitcher of water off to the side. I had to have picked like the absolute windiest day possible to decide to do this. And I spray painted about three of my fingers completely, completely black. I had issues here. So aside from trying to hold the camera and doing all the things, like I, I really apologize for it. But this is like the important part that you had to show. The soap didn't go where I wanted to go. It turned out all kinds of blobby and dumb. And then you throw the water on it like this. And then you're just supposed to kind of remove them and let them dry. Now, this is dried, but I, I don't know because all of the soap didn't come off. So I had to go, after they dried, I had to go and actually like rinse them off because there was so much soap residue left over it before I could even start this. Now, the purpose of doing the black paint, or if you choose a different color, whatever color paint over top of this is to, because the, you know, you're, you're throwing water over it before the spray paint's dry. So it's not completely, completely covering all of that glitter. So in the spaces where glitter's poking through that you don't want it to, or in my case where there's huge blobs and it was just stupid looking, I just painted over it. And then, you know, paint over the sides if you missed it, which I pretty much missed all of the sides on all of them because, you know, wind. Um, and, and then you let that dry and then you do a flood coat, not just a top coat. You're flooding it because you need to get it on the sides too where you put that paint down. Now for the paint on this, I just got a black chalkboard paint because that's what I already used. But you see, it doesn't look pretty. Like, it looks gross. Part of that is me being stupid and picking a windy day to do this. Not a good idea. Part of it was the way the soap came out. And I, I don't know what the other part was. There, there was a one and it just it left my brain really fast. But I, I, don't, I don't know. I also don't think that you have to use black either. I think you could probably get away with any color that you choose, as long as whatever colors you're putting underneath are contrasting colors, in my opinion, because you want those colors to pop. Black just kind of makes them pop more, except for where I put the black background behind and it dulled all my colors. So, you know, that's kind of something that maybe, maybe you don't have to put a back coat on it. I know she did in one of them and that's kind of what I went with, assuming that she did in her other one, but maybe not. So it's kind of like this is where I want to play around with it a little bit more and pick a non-windy day to try this and a day when I have my tripod and I don't have to worry about trying to film and make sure it's centered and, and trying to throw paint around and all these other things. However, I did, after I'm done painting this, I, I had an idea because it's not like I, I don't like it. Like, I like it, but I, I like the idea of it. I don't necessarily like my execution of it. But I was kind of cleaning up the lines a little bit. And I thought, I wonder, you know how when you're, like, in elementary school, I don't, maybe you guys didn't do it, but in our art class, one time that we had to get colors and we put a bunch of colors in crayons down and then we covered over it with black crayon and then you scrape the black away and you've got the colors. Well, that's kind of what we're doing here, right? But with paint. So I thought, I wonder if I can get a, just a cotton bud and scrape off some of this paint. Now, obviously it's not going to be in as much of an organic, I say in quotations, that this is. But I can kind of make it so that these spots that didn't get any of the soap on them at all kind of don't look like I just half-assed it. You know, because I, I, I really didn't. I, I tried. And it just didn't work out the way I wanted it to. But, you know, there were a lot of factors to it. So, you can kind of sort of fix the issues if you don't necessarily like the ways that the lines came out. Or the big blobs that you get. Or whatever. Like, you can kind of get around that a little bit and make them a little bit better. Do you know what I mean? So, there's that. I mean, it doesn't... It was a pain in the butt, but it did work. 
And I just used a little bit of alcohol and kind of scraped it off with a cotton thing and then cleaned it off with alcohol just to get all of that paint residue off of there. And then I just let this dry completely. Okay, now it's time to do the back. Now I am using just some PVA school glue and I am putting on way, 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 way too much. Like, I don't know what the hell I was thinking when I was doing this, aside from the fact that, yeah, I don't know. I, I thought it would be easier this way, but all that happened was, and of course, by the way, I'm on a time crunch here, right? Like, I need this to dry within like an hour so I can get this top coat on to get this video out in time. And I put so much freaking glue on here, like, I, you could swim in it. Like, I don't know what I was thinking. I thought it would dry a lot faster than it did. I literally spent, I had it drying for like five hours, and I went to kind of touch it to see, like, where we're at, because I needed to get this top coat done, and it was still crazy wet, and I was like, what the hell? Like, I, I can't do this. At this point, it won't even be out on Saturday. Like, I don't know when I'm going to get this out. And I don't have another video ready because, you know, I've been sick and just not feeling it and whatever. So there's a lot of things. A lot of things. Don't use this much glue. Like, it, it's not necessary. It is necessary to have a nice thick coat around those edges so that you can pull the drips off. But this is not necessary at all like I went through later on and I put my heat gun to it for a while trying to get it to dry and then I had to scrape off I probably scraped off like a quarter cup of glue easy like it was ridiculous like don't be like me not with this so 14 and a half years later once it's dry now it's time to do the flood coat I suck by the way I just want to let you know I suck at flood coats well, here recently on top coats, period, but on flood coats with these little edges like this, like it never fails that any time I try to do this, I get gloopy things that don't run down the sides of the, the, like the shaped, uh, the geo shaped edges of whatever, like they get stuck there and they just want to dry and be dumb and ruin the look of it. So I was already stressing about this. And then there's got the hole in the center that, you know, I thought, okay, well, easy enough fix. I can just drill that out. Because it's going to fill up. Like, that just, there's no way around it. I already know this is going to happen. But, this time, the first time ever, guys, the first time ever, that I actually, I didn't have any issues on the edges. Like, none. At all. I was so amazed. And then, I looked at the little guy. And... There's not enough resin on him because the cup that I used to make this stand up off the ground and make this level was in fact not level at all. And I saw it a few hours later, like at this point, the, the resin was like very, very thick and gloopy, but I scraped some off at the bottom. I nudged the cup up. I put it on there, reheated it up to smooth it out. And I thought, I should be good now. Now it's level. It shouldn't have any more issues. And this should dry nicely, right? No, why would it? Why would it? Nope. It's like, eh, we're just going to make one more thing happen. Just, you know, another thing to go wrong. So there's a big hole in the middle. That now I have to re-top coat the damn thing again. Not happy about. It's not getting done for this video, I can tell you that. Because, like I said, I was already running behind. But, but, all in all, I got the edges right. I'm really happy about that. So there's that. Can't win them all. Oh, and by the way, just to let you guys know, the glue is still wet. It's still wet. Like, I hit it with my heat gun for a good, probably 30 minutes between all of them. You know, just rotating it around so it doesn't get too, too hot. But it was still wet in the center. And I had to do it anyway. So now I'm fighting with glue on my fingers, trying to move this and make them not fall. And then when I go to take them off here in a minute, after this is done curing, they are all glued to the cup. So that was fun. And this glue still wasn't dry. So I had to clean that off too. But whatever, whatever, it's fine. It'll be fine, right? right. All right, so hitting it with the heat gun. 
we're going to let this go. And then we're going to see how they turn out. Do you see? Do you see? It's still wet. Like, it's ridiculous. Nobody needs as much glue. Okay. So, um, the, the the thing I said about you need your imagination on this one is this is supposed to be a cake stand. Right? And I specifically remember after I did the last one for Christmas, putting my cake stand pieces, because I took it apart. I can't store it that way. I don't have enough room in my house as it is. The resin is taking up the whole house. But... I put them away in a special spot where I wouldn't forget where they're at. And they're still there. So we're just going to pretend with the glamour shots that, you know, it's not a cake stand or you can use your imagination for it being a cake stand. I don't know, but I couldn't find them. So there's that. They're around somewhere safe. I just don't know where the somewhere is yet but i'm sure i'll find them when i don't need them because that's the way i roll anyway so i really really like the technique i definitely want to try it again better circumstances i should have just went with the coasters which was my initial idea but you know me i gotta try and go over the top and this one was a complete fail as far as that goes all the way around but they would make really cute clocks too like i thought about that if i had the pieces to make a clock you can even use these because they got the holes in the middle already for you and just put on numbers and then the little clock parts. But I only have a couple clock parts for that other clock that I have and it's too small for any of these. But yeah, so anyway, that's pretty much it on this one, guys. I know it was a lot of fails in there, but I think you can kind of understand the basic gist of what I was going for. Uh, just my execution was not the greatest on this one. But I am really excited and I really do like this a lot. And I hope you guys do too, if you can use your imagination a little on what I was going for. But it is what it is. And on that note, we're going to end it here. Like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. I will catch you guys on Tuesday for the next one. Love ya. Bye.